In the previous video, we explored how to read data about object behaviors such as their global positions. In this video, we'll dive into modifying this data to create or edit your animations using Python. We'll cover the various modify methods in Cascader for changing object positions and setting keyframes, for example. Let's get started. We have seen that the scene object offers various viewer methods for reading scene data. Each of these methods has a corresponding editor method. For instance, the data viewer has a data editor counterpart. Generally, we can access these editors through the various modify methods provided by the scene object. Modify methods are the primary tool for making changes to cascader scenes. There are four such methods, the modify, modify update, modify with session, and modify update with session. All four methods work similarly, they require a string as the first argument, which is the name of the command, this can be basically anything, and the second parameter should be a function which will be executed when the modify method is called. This function receives different objects depending on which modify methods you are using. So the main difference between these methods is whether they allow access to the scene updater and the session object. The basic modify method doesn't provide access to either, while modify update with session provides access to both. One crucial thing to keep in mind when using modify methods is that they also save the scene history, the same one used by the undo and redo functions. This means if you've used multiple modify commands in your script, you will need to press Ctrl Z repeatedly to undo each change made by those commands. For smoother user experience and better performance, I would recommend trying to avoid multiple modify calls in your script if that's possible. To illustrate this, let me show you an example. I made a batch rename script that renames objects in the scene. I will use it to change the underscore L suffix to uppercase L. On the left I will iterate over all of the objects in the scene and call the modify method whenever a underscore L suffix is found in the name. This means it runs a modify method 116 times in this case. On the right I will first collect the objects I want to rename and then rename all 116 objects in a single modify function call. And as you can see there is a huge difference in execution time by calling the modify method only once, the whole process takes a fraction of a second instead of the 7 to 8 seconds. Additionally, undoing the script on the left would require pressing Ctrl Z 116 times. But that's enough theory, let's see how to use the modify methods in practice. This is the animation we aim to create. Normally you would manually go to the first frame, set a keyframe on the cube's track, move the cube, go to the next frame, set a keyframe, move the cube and repeat until your animation is complete. These are the steps we will implement using Python. To build on what we've covered in the previous video, let's see how to set the global position of an object. A quick recap about the previous code. We use the model viewer to get the ID of the cube. Then we we use the behavior viewer to get the transform behavior. Within that we found the ID of the global position behavior data of the cube. And finally using the data viewer we retrieve the value of the global position. Now we don't need to read the data so we don't need a data viewer anymore. Instead we need a data editor which we can access with the previously mentioned modify methods. But which one should we choose? Since we are changing transform data, we need to run an update, so we will use the modify update method. I will give it a descriptive name like move the cube. And it also requires a function to execute, which I will call move cube. Next, we need to implement this move cube function and we need to define it before using it in the modify method. This function will receive different objects. Regardless of which modify method you use, the first two arguments will always be model editor and the update editor. In the case of the modify update method, the third argument is the scene updater. So the movecube function will receive these three objects when it is called. 
out of all of the editors, we already have the model editor and we can access the other editors through this one, such as the behavior editor or in this case the data editor. Feel free to use the help function to explore what you can do with the model editor as well as the update editor and scene updater. But to keep this video concise, I won't do it here. However, I will demonstrate calling help on the set data value method provided by the data editor, like so. So let's call this function in Cascader by opening a Python console and copy pasting the code here. And I will open an event log. As you can see, the set data method requires the data ID of the data you want to change. In our case, this is the global position, which we already have. And we can optionally define a frame or a set of frames where we want to set this data. There is a wide range of possible data types we can input for the value, including basic Python data types like booleans, integers, floats, and strings, but also arrays of floats in various shapes, such as 3 by one 4 by one and such matrices. This can be achieved using the NumPy module, which is included with Cascader. And there is also Cartanian and rotation objects from the Cascader API. This is used for working with rotation values. In our case, we need a 3D vector or a 3 by 1 matrix. And to create such a matrix with NumPy, first we will need to obviously import it. Then to create an array with numpy, we need to call numpy.array and then provide it a list of the XYZ coordinates in centimeters. For this video, that's all we need to know about numpy, so don't worry if you haven't used it before. Now we can try running our script, but as expected, nothing will happen because we still need to update the scene. To do this, we use the scene updater from our MuveCube method. The scene updater has a run update method, which requires the set of data IDs and the frame or the interval where the data was changed. So scene updater that run update. In our case, we only need to update the global position data, which we already have. So we can put it in a set like so, and then specify the frame to change, which is frame zero. And we can run again our script, and it works as expected. Now we know how to change the transform values of an object. The only problem is that if we try to run it on a frame where there is no keyframe set, it won't work. Just like doing it manually, you first need to set a keyframe on the track where your object is located, then you can move the cube, otherwise it will jump back to its original position. First we need to determine which track the cube is assigned to. And as you might guess, we need a viewer method for this, specifically the layer viewer from the domain scene to get information about animation tracks. In the API, tracks are called layers, which might be a bit confusing, but that's how it is. As usual, layers have IDs that we can use to reference them. With the layer viewer, we can use the layer ID by object ID method to get which layer belongs to a specific object. And by providing the cube ID, we can get the ID of the correct layer. And when setting the key on this layer, we are modifying the scene, so we need to use an editor method, specifically the layer editor. And as before, this is accessible through the model editor in our our modifier method. We need to do it before we are moving the cube. By the way, it's layers editor in plural. I keep messing it up. I will keep the definition of the editors at the beginning of the function. And before calling the set data value, we need to set a keyframe. For this, we need to use the set fixed interpolation or key if needed function. This can either set fixed interpolation, baking the animation, or set a keyframe. And this is how it works. First, provide the layer ID which we got previously. Specify the frame where we want to set the key, which will be frame, let's say, 5. And set the third parameter to true, to indicate we want to set a keyframe specifically and not set fixed interpolation. And since we are using the same frame in multiple places, let's store it in a variable, so I don't have to update it in multiple places. So we need to use this in both the set data value and the run update function as well. And this should work, but it won't, a uh, little bit of spoilers. 
So if I paste the code and try to run it, I mistyped the set interpolation. Okay, but this is not what I meant. But besides that, it still won't work. But we get a different error. Apparently, while we are inside the modifier method, it doesn't recognize that we extended the animation by setting the key. This results in this error when trying to modify the transform behavior outside the animation range. But thanks to Cascader support on Discord, I found that we can extend the animation range inside our modifier function. For this, we need to use the model editor and call the fit animation size by layers after setting the keyframe. This method was added just now with version 2024.1.2, so you need to make sure that you are using the latest version of Cascader. And now to make it more visible, I will set a different position like 22 meters and like 10 centimeters and if we execute now we can see that the keyframe is correctly set and the position of the cube has changed also now we finally are very close to finishing we can move our object and also set keyframes to complete the animation i will create a list of xyz coordinates and then iterate over them to set keyframe and the position for each coordinate we will use a function that generates a sinusoidal motion path and returns the list of coordinates. I won't go into details as it is not the main focus of this video, but briefly this function takes four parameters to define the frequency and amplitude of the sine wave, as well as the number of coordinates. It returns a list of 3 by one NumPy arrays as we used before, and we will use these as the coordinates to set. Using this function we can store the motion path in a variable and I will call it with a frame rate of 30 fps over 90 frames with the amplitude of 100 centimeters and a frequency such that one cycle completes in one second so over 90 frames the cycle will repeat three times. Now we can incorporate this into our modify function and we'll iterate over the coordinates in the list so coordinate in motion path and we can use the enumerate function to pair each coordinate with a frame number starting from zero now we need to insert the previous code the frame is the same variable as we used before and instead of hard coding the position we need to use the coordinate value that we are iterating Okay, so let's try it out by copy-pasting the code again. I don't need to delete the previously set keyframe because it will be overwritten and we can see how it looks. This example is really simple, but you can apply the same concepts to more complex rigs and animations. There was quite a lot of information covered in this video, so let's summarize the key points. Cascader provides four modify methods accessible from the domain scene. Each modify method requires a string that will be the name of the action and a function. The function provided to the modify methods gives access to different objects depending on which modify method you use. Try to minimize the number of calls to modify methods because each call saves the scene history which can affect performance. Use the model editor to access different editor methods such as the behavior editor, data editor and layer editor. When changing transform values or other behavior data, use the scene updater to apply the updates. And finally, use the set fixed interpolation or key if needed method of the layers editor to set a keyframe.